Dr. Lucas Meadowcroft here from Crofty. Uh, I'd just like to introduce uh, myself coming on to the Online Prosperity Show. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be talking about anything innovation. So um, any of those humps or bumps that you've come along where you really want to innovate and take your company to the next level, uh, we're going to be discussing um, the what to do's and how to do it so you can get the information you require to, to take that jump uh, and put your company to the next level. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, we've got my main man, Lucas. Lucas, how are you doing today? Good, thanks, buddy. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. Now, Lucas is the founder and CEO of Crofty um, Solutions. And he helps people like yourself, you know, to spread the power of innovation. Apparently, 90% of businesses actually think that innovation is a priority for their success and i'm really hoping that you being the viewer of this show today you are one of them a lot of us are not early adopters when it comes to innovation and technology and we we lack um you know the the skills to actually move our businesses further just because we don't have fresh ideas or we are not um you know conducting our business in um, innovative ways henceforth getting tangible results so that's the reason why we've brought in uh, Lucas so that he can give us the skinny of what he actually does at Crofty um, so that you too can either learn from him and also have a business that's profitable and enjoyable now Lucas tell us a little bit about your story and how you came about, about with uh, Crofty yeah, sure. Thanks very much. Um, as mentioned before, uh, I suppose you've co you covered uh, the topic very well, well of what, what we do and what we try to achieve for our clients. So I guess if we, if we scale back a bit, um, been in the IT industry for a very long time and there was a, there was a, a clear point in time um, working with customers, realizing that, that doing the typical IT repair and fix type of work was actually not, uh, not achieving anything, I suppose, internally. Um, uh, you know, at the end of the dog, given the results of all the outcomes the client was actually wanting to wanting to see, which is improve their business as an outcome. Tech, at the end of the day, is a tool. Uh, and I suppose many, many mo uh, years ago, I didn't realize that, um, you know, back in the, being a typical IT, IT guy, um, you, you're fixing computers and fixing software problems all the time, not realizing that the actual um, outcome for what the customer is wanting to achieve is actually... Uh, that's one aspect of it. It's actually the next aspect, which is, um, you know, uh, seeing their, they're seeing their business improve in many, many formats uh, apart from that. So I guess the evolution of listening to the customers over the years has, has led us to where uh, and what we're doing today, which is, um, you know, listening to their, their struggles within their organization and coming up with cool and innovative uh, ideas and, and creative solutions to help uh, help them take their business to the next level. Right. So from what you are, um, you know, sort of experiencing and what you've encountered in the time, what, what is the cost of not innovating a small business for, for the average entrepreneur? Yeah, the cost of doing it, I suppose, is, is can be driven from many, many different factors. But you're looking at, uh, um, I suppose, your comp competitive advantage is, is the key to any of these conversations that we're having these days is, is more and more competitors coming on the scene, more and more younger generation uh, in, in your competitive space coming on the scene, which means they're doing things differently. They're doing things uh, the new generation are, are expecting to see as a, as a given. Um, and the older generation organizations um, aren't up to speed with that. And so uh, adopting and bringing customers on board their, their journey is um, uh, for an older generation business, it's just they're, they're losing customers because of this reason. Uh, and I guess you've got to be ahead of the game. And we say, well, uh, most customers come to us and say, well, we think we're too late. Well, no, you're not. It's good that you're actually having this conversation now. Um, but if you flip it and go back a few years, yeah, uh, the, there are organizations that started the journey a few few years ago to go, okay, we, we need to change our business. We need to get ahead of the times. Um, but there's a majority of organizations that still haven't, but they know in the back of their mind they need to. They just don't know where to start because, you know, even you look at the world of social media, how many different platforms are there and, and where do you start when, you, when you're looking at your social media experience? People just get overwhelmed and they just go, no, nah, don't know where to go, so you just give up. And I suppose it, to answer your question, 
adopt uh, adapting that uh, to your business where you are currently and having a future uh, I suppose insight to where you see yourself in the next uh, you know 12 months to three years that's uh, that's ensuring that your scope of what you're trying to achieve can actually be achieved understandable so obviously with what you're saying with the advent of social media the advent of instant gratification from the younger generations because obviously they've been brought up in the in the times when um, you know, you send a text message, you should receive an instant message. You send an instant message from whatever platform somebody has to respond pronto. You know, it's not like back in the time where you would have a phone at the office and that's when you're expected to do business. Now, with all that coming together, and um, obviously it is a bit overwhelming, there comes the aspect of automation. Could you just walk us through the simple process that you help your clients um, you know, you know, automate their business using uh, whatever you know simple technologies that you have there. Yeah, sure. And I guess one thing you just touched on was customer communication, right? People are expecting instant responses, um, and I guess a lot of people still don't realize that there's systems out there. Like when I say systems, tools, or, or tech that can actually help you automate a lot of your customer um, customer communication. Uh, so I guess if you take a step back uh, around this automation and what, what the process, and this is more of an educational, I suppose, talk, is let's go back a step and actually work out what our process is or what our process should look like. So really dig deep into what do we want and what our customer journey to be, um, you know, from, from all the way from sales through all the way to invoicing. And every step of the way, we need to make sure that we're, we're covering off what the expectations are from a customer point of view, but also ensuring that we're, we're also doing a due diligence from our point of view. So once we understand that process, we can then map that towards the customer journey. We can then put the systems and tools in place to ensure that we're, um, we're hitting our goals along the journey. Understandable. So is what you do a cookie cutter type process or do you customize these solutions, um, you know, for your, for each and every individual customer or because as far as I'm concerned, every business is different. So there wouldn't be, you know, a set way of doing things, um, even if we're in the same industry. The, I guess what we've found over the last few years of doing this is um, the process is the same and the outcomes are the same, but the actual tools and tech that we choose to do that is where what comes into industry specific and obviously service versus product as well. So um, uh, I guess the, the simple answer is the, the, the steps and the process we follow to get the same outcome. It's, it's pretty similar across all businesses. Um, most businesses that we work with anyway, because they, they, as long as they've got the, the same morals and the same values of what we're trying to achieve, which is keep the customer happy, whatever product or service you're selling, then you're following that same, that same process. Um, the process, I suppose, that, well, this might help answer your question, the process we go through with our clients to understand that is actually literally um, interviewing staff members within an organization, interviewing the directors, interviewing the C-level ops, interacting or interviewing every staff member in every department to work at actually what people do every single day in their role to actually understand, okay, this is the, the, right now their process to do everything in their job is this. We, we can put in tools around automation to, do, to reduce their, their job flow to this. And that will also then trigger off all the customer communication that has to happen along the way. Understandable. So Lucas, I'm just looking at uh, my own little uh, factory here and I'm thinking, do I have to bring you in or can you work remotely so that you can actually implement all these systems? Yeah, hundred percent work remotely. Um, even though we're, we're, I suppose we're based in Brisbane, we have a lot of Brisbane clients. We also have a lot of clients around the country. Uh, we've already already had opportunities to work with clients around um, overseas as well. So when it comes to to work, I suppose, and we're having this um, this live uh, conversation right now, uh, and we're not even in the same same state, right? Same city. So. Um, the same as when it comes to implementing process and, and, and technology. I guess the key point about doing anything remotely that we've found that works well is ensuring that we've got that engagement. So this video video call and video conference is obviously key because we're, we're engaged. So if it's an audio or if it's a phone call, I could still see, be seeing here working away, right? Which means that that engagement's not 100% um, uh, happening. So if we were to work together, then yeah, we could totally do it a, a remote as long as we've got that acknowledgement that we're here. This time that we've got together, we're going, we're here to get, get, get this shit done. Really, to be honest. Understandable. Now, Lucas, as business is now, uh, you know, going global, we're no longer living in a twenty-four hour box. 
Um, we got to start thinking outside that periphery of, you know, business hours. So that also entails some sort of offshoring, um, you know, co consultation or trying to get um, leverage of people that are awake during the hours that we hear in whatever, you know, area you would be, would be asleep. Is there any assistance that you put forth, um, you know, for people that want to extend their services uh, overseas? Yeah, so uh, one part of what we do, I suppose, the, which is the end goal, is actually to help companies set up an offshore entity uh, anywhere in the world to actually have an office with staff members running from that office, as you, typically these days is a back-end operation. Um, so that's usually the last piece of, of puzzle that we provide. We do the, everything with the consulting, finding the right partners, getting the onboarding, finding the right staff, setting up the office. We do the whole process for an organization. But to get to that point, um, you need to have the structure and foundation in your company. And if you're based in Australia or based in the US or based wherever, get your company structure um, right first. When I say company structure, not from an accountant and ATO point of view, yeah, we've got to make sure that's right. But, all, but I mean mainly from a actual people process product service line that the entire structure of a company make sure that's streamlined and then we can we can bolt on this um this offshoring entity as well and then we can bring both um both parties together to ensure you got the seamless um uh input through we had done in the, in the uh, opposite direction before in the past where uh customers they just want to to have this offshoring set um option set up for them which is which is fine but it, we found it doesn't work or it might work for the first three or six months, but then it kind of fades away and doesn't work effectively if you don't have your structure of your business set up from a process point of view. Understandable. So obviously, I mean, whoever is probably watching this is intrigued about your services and, you know, might want to jump on a call with you specifically so that they can find out, you know, how you can be of service. How can people get a hold of you there, Lucas? Um, the good thing is I'm very unique when it comes to my name. So if you look up Lucas Metacroft anywhere online through LinkedIn, Facebook, um, website, um, I'm the only one in the world. So it's pretty easy to find me, which is very good and very handy. Uh, but any, any forms of online communication or my direct detail. So I'm more than happy to share my email directly after this. Uh, you can post as well, uh, which is lucas at crofty.com.au. Understandable. Well, look, it's, this has been phenomenal. And thank you so much for your time, your expertise, and your knowledge that you've just dropped on this show today. Would there be any last things that you might um, want to offer to our audience just in case they're sitting on the edge, not sure what to do with their innovation and how they too can actually start, um, you know, growing the businesses uh, using whatever available technologies are there? Yeah, if you've ever had a crazy idea that you, you've sat on for a while and, and then someone else has come up with a crazy idea and actually run with it, just just don't hold back. Um, have the conversation with someone. Don't think that you need to hold on to that idea. If you want to take your business global, then just, just go for it. Yes, you obviously put the risk involved and make sure you're not doing anything silly like you know, selling your house or, or you know, <laughs> throwing, going all in. Um, but just do it. Just um, don't hold back. Understandable. Well, Lucas, I can't thank you enough for your time on the show today. Um, it's been absolutely phenomenal. And if you're watching this show, be sure to um, subscribe because every single day we're bringing in experts like Lucas so that they can give us the skinny of what it is that they actually do so that they can help you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Thank you once again, Lucas. Awesome, mate. Thanks very much.